I had no idea what kind of footage I would use for this. Didn't realize how long I would go. So you're going to forget about the first 10 seconds of this audio. What's up YouTube, it's Cutiebird. Um, I was going through some Steam articles on Modern Warfare 3 looking for a certain, art certain article relating to Black Ops 2 and well, I found it. The gameplay you're going to be watching is uh, Modern Warfare 3. I just needed to find a game that was about this long and watchable. So let me switch to that article and begin reading. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 rumored multiplayer and release date hit official forums. It's from March 29th, but I haven't actually read anything that's been disproven. Not that I actually care about what T. Martin and Ali, whatever his name is, and all the rest of them who are just looking for views to get more money, post. Yeah, alright. Treyarch and Activision are yet to officially announce anything about the next Call of Duty. We can expect that to be revealed around E3 time. Well, we, got, we got that a little before, that's true. There's plenty of evidence around the next year's Call of Duty will be Black Ops 2, that's correct. Big list of features and changes attributed to the upcoming sequel has been plonked on the Black Ops forums and since removed, re-uploaded to some different forums and then removed again. MP first noticed pulled the info from a cached copy of one of these forums. The list contains a lot of precise details about returning game modes, ditched game modes, ditched gadgets, ditched gadgets like the RCXD, balance changes, and a word of November release date. If true, these details would suggest we're not only going to see a major engine upgrade from the new COD, something I've heard about YouTube videos that are upgrading the engine, and info reads more like a patch list than a list of sequel features. But it's just rumor for now. Here's the full list. Leaked Black Ops 2 multiplayer information. This year, Call of Duty will return with its ninth installment, Black Ops True, that's true. As expected, it will be following Treyarch's previous game, Black Ops. Its release date is set for the 6th of November. Um, I've heard 13th, but that would put it on a Tuesday. Both of those would be Tuesdays, which is when it releases in the United States. Games always release on Tuesday. I have no idea why. I'd prefer it on a Friday so I could stay up all night and beat the campaign in one go. But that's irrelevant. So, Game modes. Escort. A new game mode similar to Search and Destroy. However, a live player must be escorted to one of these areas, to one of three areas, or two depending on the map without being killed. The match will have three rounds, will have rounds, sorry, I did misread the three, consisting of one life only. So it's going to be very similar to Search and Destroy, but escorting a player instead of a bomb, uh, basically just take Search without the bomb. <laughs> Which is how it usually gets played anyway, so not a bad thing. Drop Zone and Kill Confirmed will return. Team Defender and Infected will not return. Alright, so for those of you who haven't talked to about these game modes in specific, I'm I really am indifferent to Drop Zone. I used to like it, but I just I don't like the way it plays anymore. Really, I just I, it's not my game mode. Uh, and and same goes for I, I guess I kind of like Kill Confirmed. I mean, I know a lot of people do like it, so I have no problem with those coming back. Team Defender and Infected will not return. I get a little more opinionated here because I'm a big fan of Team Defender. I think it's really you know, adds a new spin to Team Deathmatch. You know, I, I love it. And I'm on the island here when I say I don't like Infected. And I think a few of you know that. Not very many. And I know I'm on the island. But I'll look up later how many people are in Domination, which is probably the third most played game type behind Kill Confirmed. And, of course, Team Deathmatch is always the most played. But I'm in Infected. But I just, I don't like it. I just does not play at all like any other game type and every other game type plays like COD which means I don't I really just don't think it works so I'm glad it's gone point streaks will follow the Modern Warfare 3 system larger emphasis on objectives a bomb plant worth two points neutral flag worth one have an enemy flag worth two a flag assist capture is worth one a capture is worth two the specialist point streak has been modified Two kills now gets you the first perk. Four kills now gets you two more perks. The sixth kill gets you three more perks. The eighth kill gets you four more perks. So if my math is correct, that is ten bonus perks on top of your three. They put you at 13 total perks. Uh, let's add another one in there. No, I'm kidding. I love 13. You do not get every perk when you reach 8 kills. Perks will only become pro when you have them pro. RCXD will not return. 
So in Modern Warfare 3, for those who don't know, perks, like say I ha am earning sit rep in my strike package. I don't get the sit rep pro effect unless I have it pro. What I think they mean by this is that Treyarch's tweaking the perk system, I'll touch that later, and you only get the one you have pro you don't get both effects. Uh, I think they should screw around even more. For example, in Search and Destroy, I think they should make a bomb plant worth three and a diffuse worth three. I didn't say anything about diffusing. I'm assuming it's worth the same as a plant. Um, I think I like the neutral flag being less than. I think that should be one. I think B should be double worth what A and C are. Or if A or C is the hot flag on a certain map, I think they should make that double. I mean, just have the hot flag, which is usually B, but that, there can be some exceptions. Be double. Uh, specialist, I, I can see why they're changing it, but I really don't care about special about what they do with it. 13 perks and 15 perks are all but the same. It's the proficiencies that really makes a big difference. And this says nothing about that, so we can't make any assumptions. Heat Vision is a new point streak reward. When you get the required points, you can activate this point streak and your player pulls out a scope and attaches it to your weapon. Scope's main advantage is its ability to detect enemies through wall most walls. Note, the scope can only be attached to primaries, not including shotguns. I'm going to speak for quite a few people when I take this quote from a Black Ops 2 forum. I hope they balance that uh, D word, wall scope. Yeah. I really, I love the concept I think it's one of the few things that got right in Blacklight. I'll talk about that later. I did, really didn't like that game when I tried it. It really does reduce camping, but I think they need to complete rem completely remove all penetration to a player that has that. That would fix, because I, I can speak for most people when I say it really sucks to get wall banged. So I, they need, they definitely need to patch that. That's one of the things screaming Treyarch mistake on, and I'll, you know, I can make, I'll make another video touching what I think about Treyarch's current things. Alright, let's move on. Item packages. Requires five points. I'm assuming that means point streak thing. Falls alongside care, fall, fall alongside care packages and airdrop traps. That means the airdrop trap is returning. Not something I like. Features a list of package items only including ammo, minigun, grenade launcher, rocket launcher, and body armor. Alright, here we go, Treyarch, you gotta balance this. Which means, this means they're beefing up care packages and airdrop traps to do actually more than what they do. So this is making me worried. I don't, um, and I don't want guys getting support airdrop traps and getting a minigun or a rocket launcher, body armor, ammo, and, grenade and big grenade launchers such as the SMA are scary. I, I don't understand why they. I think they're going to need to do something like what Tribes Ascend does and give certain points out, and then you can call stuff in depending on how many points you have. I really hope they do that. It's like support, but you're only going to get one big thing a game unless you've got serious skill, and you're not going to get it if you don't have a lot of skill. I mean, I've never gotten an orbital strike. So I really am worried about that. Prestiges. There will be 15 prestiges. There will be 50 ranks. Every two prestigious, there's a five rank increase. The final prestige has 90 levels. All right. So, first thing is somebody got some math wrong because 15 can't divide by two. <laughs> so I'll just we'll go eight times five is 40. So I'm just assuming that 15 and 14, or that it goes on the odd. So one, three. Five, etc. Get the increase. I'm panicking about this right now. Modern Warfare 3, I'm already debating. I've got all my 10 classes. I'm probably going to stop at 10, but I don't actually know. I could stop at 7 where I'm at now. I'm going to panic here. I've got to get all the way up to 15 if I want the full 90 levels because they're not going to have 40 levels of blank stuff. There's going to be, I don't know what they're doing with the perks, but there could be perks in there. There will be guns in there going to be extra strike package unlocks if they keep what Modern Warfare has done. So I'm really 
how do I put this politely, ticked off that they're doing this. It's basically saying, oh, unless you you get to 15 prestiges, you don't get this stuff. It's basically forcing people to prestige if they actually want stuff. Which, I mean, of course, everybody wants to have something unlocked. That's why, that's why people stay. They, that's the reason they don't prestige is because they like having, say, a gold camo unlocked. Or they like extended mags on the AA-12, for example. I mean, it's or they like playing with the FAD and the MP7 and, and don't want to give them up. So no, 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 Treyarch, do not do that. I'm gonna be ticked off if they do do this. Elite 2.0. Elite is being fully incorporated into Black Ops 2. <sighs> I'll explain that later. Combat records modified and renamed as Elite Stats. There will be a specific lobby for clan matches, new wave leveling clans. Clan tournaments can now be implemented. Sounds great, right? Well, here's the problem. Elite is not on PC, which I know they're launching the game on. And Modern Warfare 3 is on Wii, and I will bet money that Elite's not on that, because no game developer ever takes the Wii seriously. So, again, Treyarch is doing the same thing Infinity War did, and said, Oh, go buy an Xbox! I don't want to buy an Xbox. I prefer my game to look pretty. I prefer my game to play smoothly. I prefer to be able to run over 60 FPS, and I prefer to not drop frames. Thanks. Removed. No Moab or Nuke. No Last Stand. No Death Streaks. No Flamethrower Attachment. Alright, so I can I speak for most people when I say Moabs and Nukes, or at least most PC players, are something that should not be in the game. Last Stand, I speak for everybody, I think, when I say that. The flamethrower, I don't think anybody actually took that seriously, and it could be a balance nightmare, so I'm glad they took that out. Um, I kind of hope they take the shotgun out, because it's really pointless. That, or find the magic buffing, like huge damage but no range. I don't know, the master key always worries me, because they can never balance that thing. It's always sucked. However, no death streaks. Um, I know... I've never been able to gauge whether I'm on the island or I'm in the main group here when I say I like certain death streaks. For example, in Modern Warfare 2, I like Copycat, which is all but useless, and I don't like the rest. In Modern Warfare 3, I think Revenge is perfect. I think Juice is underpowered, it should not have a time limit. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it for death streaks. No, I can I can understand martyrdom. Let me say that I can understand martyrdom. I'll talk about that later. But uh, no, no, no for final stand. No, no, no for dead man's hand. Really big no for dead man's hand. Map design. Map design inside us will be following Black Ops, not Modern Warfare Three. Great. I don't like Treyarch maps usually. Um, I know I'm on the island when I say I don't really like Nuketown. Yeah, I know, I know. <gasps> he doesn't like Nuketown. Uh, I do like Firing Range, I do like Summit, what else do I like? That's, that's the problem, is I really, I like those two, I guess I can, I can stand Cracked, I can stand Array, uh, but there's a lot, a lot of maps on Black Ops I'm not particularly big on. Sniper Rifles, oh dear me. Improved Sniper Rifle Usage, no aim assist for any Sniper Rifle, less sway. Alright, so... I'll say it right now. A lot of console guys are like, oh, I can play with that. It messes me up more. All right, come on over here. Try to quick scope. Oh, you missed. Oh, you missed. You missed. You missed. Your MSR has an empty mag. I feel sorry. I feel so sorry. I'm gonna knife your face. So I'm improving the. So the aim assist will really take away the quick scoping, guys. It really will. I can say that from experience because I see a lot of guys on PC fail quick scope. And I don't see a lot of quick scopers here because it's really darn hard to do. Um, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I know I'm in the odd group out and I say I actually like sway on sniper rifles because it makes it so you have to snipe properly. You can't just quick fly in there because you're going to lose somebody with the sway. Uh, and then improved sniper rifle usage, that's going to mean a faster aim down sights time compared to black ops. It, re it is. It's going to mean that the ADS perk helps, which I don't like. And it's going to, yeah, I know sniping is controversial. I'm going to take people off with it, but I'll make a video. I know I've said this twice already, at least, about what I think about sniping, because you're going to be surprised. Although I may have hinted here. I don't like, I don't really like sniping. Customization. No longer just a perk one chooses the player's appearance. Uh, appearance is a custom combination of all perks and the type of point streak being used. 
So for those who don't know, in Black Ops, you look like your perk one. Like your perk one determines how you're used. Like for example, Ghost gives a ghillie suit, and Flak Jacket gives you a big jacket. Lightweight makes you skinny, and Hardline and Scavenger look different, but they look normal. So yeah, I really, I really don't care about this, <laughs> other than the fact that no ghillie suits on non-snipers. Hardcore. L larger emphasis on hardcore than ever before. No grenade launchers. Only vehicle guided rocket launchers permitted. That means kill streaks, I think, unless they're putting vehicles in the game, which it could definitely mean that. Respawn timings decreased for most modes, i.e., capture the flag, sabotage. So maybe we're going to get hardcore for them. Headquarters. Uh, one bullet in the foot will no longer kill a person. A head or chest shot is usually required. That's going to come around by a body of multipliers in hardcore. So they're probably going to give a player 50 health with like a 1.5 multiplier on the head and chest, on the chest, and a 2.0 on the head. Uh, that'll be pretty simple. A person will now bleed out if severely injured. Cool, but I really don't care. I, uh, most people don't play hardcore, myself included, so I'm going to gloss right over that. Perk System 2.0. The pro perk system has been upgraded. There is now two options a perk can advance to. Both require different challenges to unlock. Once the desired pro version is unlocked, a player can select that as their pro perk. Once selected, the only way to choose the other option is by entering prestige mode. Great. For example, perk 1 slot has a perk called speed. Speed is quick draw. Pro 1, swap weapons faster. Pro 2, throws equipment faster. Alright, so Treyarch, I really like this, except I think that by choosing the other option, only way entering prestige mode, dum 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 That's just... So what if, what if I'm... Let's say I'm a noob who's never played Call of Duty before. So I... I pro speed, and I think, well, I don't ever swap my weapons other than use my primary, so I'll choose Pro 2 to throw equipment faster. All of a sudden, you're stuck, and, it, and I don't want to prestige. Now I'm stuck, and I can't swap my weapons faster, which is probably all, honestly saves you more than throwing equipment faster, because you don't throw equipment when you're in trouble and run dry, you switch your weapon. Throwing equipment faster saves you downtime. Swap weapons faster saves your life. So now you're stuck with Pro 2, and you want Pro 1, and the only way to do that is to prestige, which you don't want to do, because you've got everything unlocked on every gun, and maybe you've gotten three other perks wrong, and that's the only thing asking you to prestige. And now you're stuck. That's just dumb. Combat training. We'll be returning with vast improvements. Difficulty is no longer based on how long the bots take to start shooting. Bots now have an advanced AI system, similar to the behavior seen in MW3 Spec Ops Survival. Alright, so I really like everything, except that it says the bots now have an advanced AI system, and then it kind of contrasts that, because MW3 Spec Ops Survival, that's not a very advanced AI system. Hate to break it to you guys. Team Fortress 2, which is a free game, has a much better AI, uh, AI system in their training mode. Uh, MW3 Survival, they kind of just run at you with explosives strapped to their chest or a gun that can shoot more ammunition than it actually has. Don't get me wrong, I love Spec Ops Survival. I think it's better than Zombies, and I'm probably one of the few who think that, but I think it is. But that's you can't really get the advanced AI system with it being similar to that. It's, that's not a very... Advanced AI system, it's kind of just move cover to cover and then go running at me like kamikaze. Alright, I'll probably share the article to Twitter since it gives me op the option to. I hope you enjoyed. This has been Skeeter Bird. Well, now I've gotten. How do I put this? Another 10 ish minutes that I've got to commentate. Currently, I'm in the middle of attempting to kill a juggernaut and well this is one of my older strategies what I figured out is it doesn't work so well theoretically explosives do a lot of damage to juggernauts but they patch that a multiplayer and it does not seem to work in this I think that's only for missions which makes no sense but what do you do so my main strategy this game 
and as is usual for villages to kind of move around the map not get caught in one spot uh, resistance gets a bit campy that's why I chose to try to do village for this and if you're playing solo on resistance you have to cover two doors resistance is kind of hard to do run around on if you know what I mean so right here first thing I did was call on my perk so that I would free up my slot to be able to use the riots which I called in and then I got the predator missile I always want to have in reserve in case things get really bad I don't end up using preds except on juggernauts so right here I'm trying to stay alive because I don't want to lose my self revive that's when you're playing solo your self revive is your life That's you have to remember that if you lose that you're in real trouble and you have to be able to pay for another one at the end of the round so don't overspend I mean, 5,000 about as, is about as low as I ever dwindled this game. I think I go down to 4 at one point, but you cannot run low on any, on a, you always have to have one of those, those silver rides are your life. So the ACR and AK-47 are two of my top five weapons, the other three being LMGs, namely the M60, L86, and of course the MG. Is it 42 or 36? I think it's 36. A 42 in my head because that's what it was from the first time I saw it in the campaign. Anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and put a red dot on my ACR because while the irons aren't bad, it's 750 to make sure I keep my shots on target. And a noob tube that I don't ever use because I have the money to spare and having those tubes bails you out sometimes. And I have no idea where the guys spawn on this map. On resistance, I have a good idea because, I mean, let's be honest here, resistance is like the only one everybody you can consistently find a game in. Because there are people who only do play resistance, and I think that was the first time I went down. So you'll notice I'm going to make an extra effort to not die the rest of this round. Which means I'm going to flank here, get my reloads in, and then just. I'm going to cover my rights back. So you got to be really, really careful when you're playing without a soft revive on solo. That was dumb. I'm not sure why I did that looking back. And again, if it gets it done, it gets it done. Right here, it's a 1v1, and I know I can take one of them. 1v1, so I just go ahead and run in there and spray away. Get it done, right? I, I'm probably the only one to say this, but I prefer survival of the zombies. Now, the reason I prefer survival of the zombies is a, I don't like the whole way the maps are structured, how you have to unlock that. I'm not, I don't like that. And then, I like the flexibility of being able to either sit in one spot and camp it out, or stay on the run. Zombies, if you don't move, you're dead. So it's just, you have to know the map, but that's not something I want to put the time into. Also, I prefer doing it on multiplayer maps, like, I don't know how to put this. I don't really like Kino Der Toten. Um, I'm not familiar with any of the World at War ones or Moon. Because I've never played World at War and uh, I did not buy Resurrection. Because I'm just not playing with zombies. I've never tried Call of the Dead. I've never tried Ascension because it's big and it's hard to find a game on Ascension. So I guess I'm really only familiar with five. Which is alright. I still prefer Resistance and Village to 5. I just. I don't know. I'm not a zombies fan. So, right here, got it taken care of. Got to go pick up one of those things. Self revives are your life when you're playing solo. And knowing how fast I've been chewing through ammo this game, especially since I want to stick using the ACR. I prefer to not run dry and have to use the AK because then I have to wait for reloads. And while they're both relatively quick reloading, I don't have sleight of hand. Because I just said no, the reason I bought steady aim instead of sleight of hand, which would be my normal pickup, is that I was just not spraying a lot this game. I noticed that. Usually I end up being a little more concentrated in my fire. The knife, I really did save me quite a few times. Yeah. 
dogs. Do dogs can be a problem because if you don't time it right, dogs can be your end. So one of the first things I'm going to say to you is attempt to shoot dogs. Don't try to knife them. Even if you only get one shot on target, they fall down and then they become easy shots. Or you can go up and knife them while they're down. They can't bite you. So I don't think it's right here. No, I'm trying to read the side of the screen. I think it says 19. Yeah, it says 19. So I'm making an extra effort to get over there by the predator missile thing so that I can use preds against the juggernauts. Because that's real. the juggernauts, I don't have an LNG, and there's three of them. This is triple juggernauts. So I'm just going to wait. I'm spotting them right now. I see my right guys. Here comes the jugs. So I see one of them. That guy's going to be an easy shot. He's in the open. So I'm just waiting until he deploys. Up oh, there he goes. Fire in the hole. So now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run for a predator missile. Now I'm getting shot. So I'm trying to do this quickly. I'm being shot. So I'm an oh shoot, he's in my spot. So I'm going to run as fast as I, well, Modern Warfare 3 guy can to a semi safe spot where I'm panicking because I know he's right like three steps away and I launch my pred too soon and I can't get it around and I miss horribly. And at that point, I think I said a not so nice word because I was really scared. So I never beat this on solo before, before this game. Hint, hint, I do beat this wave. So right here, I think I'm dead because I'm shot. I know I can't get him, and I remember, oh, there's that bar. And I look down, and, oh, crap. So I thought I was dead, and I was going to be furious because I wanted to get that so bad. So I'm just I'm hiding, trying to cling, cling on to life. I'm back. So I'm going to get away from these juggernauts. Go ahead and sneak my reload. Hey, they're way behind me, and they're going up. I noticed on UAV. Failing, looking for the predator thing. They're right next to each other. I've loaded them together. Now I just have to run, run, run. Get to a, well, I wouldn't call it a safe spot, but it's away from the jugs. So long, juggernauts. Hey, hey, hey. Now, I hate to say it, but there was irony. At this point, I'm going, yes! And when does the quad juggernaut wave? 30, 25. I know 30 is nasty, I've failed on that multiple times. So, you know, I'm like thinking, ah, oh, 21 through 24 should be a breeze, 25 will be something tricky, and then we'll worry about that. I forgot I did not have a self revive. At this point, I'm like, oh shoot, I don't have one. I get started getting shot in the back. So I'm going quickly there, quickly killing this guy. I get my health back, so I'm thinking, okay, I'm good. Got my self revive, got extra health. They've got fads, which is not a typical gun, and then get a little spray happy and get a little unhappy. Let's watch. There's, there's only about, I don't know, 10 guys left, and I just got shot. Like, it must have been a headshot. It was bad. Oh, well. Thanks for watching. This has been Skeeterbird.